Hello, this is How To Bob, and in this video, I'm going to change out a kitchen faucet. What I have is a single handle peerless faucet, and I'm going to go to a delta very similar. You can see my existing faucet leaks around the base, and the finish is not all that good, so I'm not going to bother rebuilding it. It's basically a cheap faucet. So I'm going to go underneath the sink first off, and I'm going to look for the shutoffs. Now you want to make sure that the shutoffs work, both the hot and the cold. These are gate valves, so sometimes they fail and they'll have to be replaced. So I'm going to go ahead and shut both valves off. And sometimes your valves will look like this, but we had the old style gate valves. Once they're turned off, I'm going to go up and make sure that they worked. And I see that I have no water flow, so both valves actually worked. So now I can go back under the sink and I'm going to disconnect the supply to the faucet and I need to hold the actual pipe on this because it's pretty tight so I'm going to hold it with my channel lock pliers while I unscrew the actual supply on top with a wrench here once I get it loose I can go ahead and just use the wrench until I get it loose enough to get with my hand and then just pull it up and it's a good idea to have a towel or some kind of rag underneath there to catch the water because there is always going to be some water left in there. I can go ahead and do the other side, the cold side, and unloosen that. And again, once I get it loose, there's going to be water coming out. So have a towel down there. It's nice and handy. Next, I'm going to go up to the top and loosen the faucet itself. There's two nuts holding the faucet on, and I can actually reach it with the wrench here. Once I get that, I can loosen it up with by my hand and then I'm going to go to the other side of the faucet and loosen up that nut and this is just the nut that's holding down the faucet to the sink. Now if you can't reach it you may have to use what's called a basin wrench and what this does is extend your reach. It's got a jaw on the front that will grip onto the nut and it bends to the side one side or the other and you just basically twist it once you get it on the nut if you can't reach up in there with the regular wrench. So now that I've got it loose I can go ahead and pull out the faucet and the supply lines kind of working it out. They're staggered so they do come out and I've got these out now. I'm going to clean up the area around where the faucet's going to go. And once this is clean, this is where you would put the plumber's putty if you decide to. I'm going to skip that part because i got a nice gasket on the bottom of this faucet. Now on the bottom you can see there's two lines here, the cold and the hot, and they're half inch. And then there's just two plates that hold it down very similar to the one I took out. And I'm just going to take off the two hold downs. And I have my supply lines here. They're 3 8 on the bottom and half inch. So I'm going to screw those into the supply tubes on the faucet. Now these are braided stainless steel and that keeps them from crimping if I have to bend them a little bit and it keeps them from bursting. Once I get them hand tight you can see the label here um, says you got to keep the tubes from being twisted so I want to put a wrench on each side and keep that tube from twisting. That will damage the faucet and it will not be covered under any warranty if you do happen to crimp or bend the supply tubes that are attached to the faucet. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten down my hot and cold supply lines. These are 12 inch. I measured them. I'll have to loop them around a little bit, but as long as they're not kinked, they can be a little longer. And I've got the half inch side tightened down. Now I can feed my supply lines down into the faucet hole in the center and I want to kind of hold it. This is where it would come in handy to have two people. I'm just going to take my two hold downs and screw them on to the bottom back underneath the sink area. Get that hand tight and then I can go ahead and do the other side. Now this is where I'm going to go back up to the top or I'll have someone else hold the faucet, center it, make sure it's straight and then I'll come back down underneath the faucet and tighten it up so it's good and tight. So now I can hook up my supply line and once I get that tight I can go ahead and wrench that tight if it needs to be real tight you will want to hold hold on to the supply end 
with a pair of channel locks or another wrench if you have to because you don't want to twist the pipe that's coming up from the floor or the wall if that's the case. And then same thing, I have to loop this one over. Um, if it's a nice sweeping loop, it's okay. You don't want the supply line to be crimped in any way or a tight loop. Um, but this is pretty, pretty loose here and it shouldn't cause any flow issues with the faucet. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten up my cold side now. And once I get that tight, I can go ahead and wipe down any spots that might have some leftover water on them. I want to make sure everything's dry before I turn the water on. That way I can check for leaks. Now I can go ahead and turn my water on. And the first thing I'm going to do once I get my water on is feel around for any leaks. And it looks like that side's dry, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the hot. And once again, I'm going to feel for any leaks. Now there'll be some air in the lines, so once I go back up to the top, turn my faucet on, it might spit. And you want to run the faucet for a little while before you actually use the water. And what I'll usually do is I'll run the water for a little bit, get all the air out, and then I'll go back down underneath the sink. And I'll check it once again for leaks just to make sure and everything looks good on this. So this is how you replace a single handle faucet in the kitchen. This is how to Bob. Thanks for watching.